Hello guys, I'm here with the interview of the century. It's almost as if to die for. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Thomas Beckett. I am the Chancellor of England. Uh, I am King Henry. So guys, uh, what's your relationship? He is my prince. I am loyal to him. Uh, he's my chancellor. He's my best friend. I go to him for advice all the time. So guys, a uh, serious question here. What do you do on your free time? I've seen you around. Uh, okay. Well, as Chancellor and the King, we really don't have a lot of free time, but we make up for it sometimes. So we like to go, you know, out on the town. <laughs> Perfect. And, you know, meet lots of women, drink some booze, lay back, go ride our horses in the woods. Alright, Thomas, how do you feel about the position of Archbishop? I don't... I don't really want it. It's, uh... It scares me because I have to be loyal to my God and to the throne. And it's really hard to do that because they cross paths so many times and they don't... They don't really see eye to eye all the time. King Henry, he uh, he wants more war, and he wants he wants everything to go his way, but that doesn't always see eye to eye with God and how God has things planned. Do you think King Henry will stray you from your path from God? I believe he'll try, but I'll do my best for my God and for the people of England to be with God. Alright, so do you think you'll take the position then? I will. So King Henry II, why did you offer Thomas the position of Archbishop? Uh, I feel like I could rely on him. He was, uh, he's always been loyal to me and uh, the past Archbishops have always kind of been against what I wanted. So uh, I feel like he would be on my side if I needed him. Did you break any rules considering he was a priest even before you promoted him? But before he got promoted, he was uh, went through the protocol, I guess you would say, to become a priest, and then he became archbishop. So considering how you are the crown and not the church, do you think you had the power to do that uh, without angering the church? I was able to sway the bishop to vote for him, so I didn't really break any rules. Uh, did you th do you think you angered the church at all? Because let's face it, the church is pretty powerful at times. Uh, perhaps, because some people are probably more deserving than him, but it doesn't really matter. Why doesn't it matter? <laughs> because in this way that he's bishop, uh, I'll be able to do more things my way and rather than the church's. So do you look at this as more of a control almost say politically considering that you are now trying to get your foot in the church as long as you are the king so the monarchy you control would say are you want to control the church too uh, pretty much uh, I need the money from the church and with him being in power I'll be able to get the money for all the stuff I want to do so would you say this is almost a revenge act upon you saying the church was going to knock off you the money so you're putting your people in the church? It's not necessarily revenge, it's just doing what I have to do in order to do what I want to do. Keep it real. So, King Henry, how do you feel uh, about your relationship with Thomas Beckett after you gave a position of Archbishop? Uh, I feel kind of betrayed. Uh, it's not really going as planned. He's not as loyal to me as I thought he would be. Uh, he's more loyal towards the church, you know. So I wouldn't say it's as good. Well, isn't that the position of an archbishop? Uh, yes, but I felt like his loyalty was stronger to me, but I guess I was wrong. So you thought wrong. So Thomas, how do you feel about your new role in the church as Archbishop of Canterbury? It's a very stressful position. It's I try to be loyal to my king, but when I die, I don't face the king, I face God. 
What if he died by the king? If I died by the king, if I died today, I'd have to face God. And I'd be doing everything in my power as of now to, you know, do the right thing and face the king and not let him get his way and do everything to the right that God's eyes are. All right. So, King Henry, how would you say your relationship with Thomas is going right now? Uh, it's even worse than it was before. Uh, I was trying to arrest him for treason, but uh, he ended up fle fleeing to France and uh, where the Pope threatened to excommunicate me if he if I didn't allow him to come back. So, I have to allow him. If you could have one thing solved in this world, what would it be? Uh, and then I'll take back the mistake that I made by making a Thomas Beckley artificial. It's almost like you want to get rid of him. I do. I would hope someone would rid me of this priest. So how do you appreciate not going to heaven now by killing an archbishop? Well, I guess I'll just have to pay for my sins. Mm. Such a pity. Wake up, you goof! What am I at? You've been dead. When did I die? Four knights killed you at the altar while you were praying to God. That's the house of God. They're, they can't come in after me. Come there. Well, we brought you back for interview. So please, have a seat before we start this show. Help me over there, man. I've been dead a long time. So Thomas, I have some news for you that you might take really well or you might even feel some sorrow for. I'd like to start off with your murderers were actually excommunicated for their crimes. And King Henry felt so bad that he walked all the way to Canterbury from London, which is a five hour ride, so we all know how long of a walk that would be. But I'll also have you know that you were murdered on the 29th of December of 1170. Uh, I don't know what to say to that. He killed me. Like he sent, Henry sent out the word to kill me. <laughs> the knights paid for what they did. They're no longer part of the church. And it brings me happiness that Henry cared so much to feel the sorrow, even though after he told the knights to kill me. Thank you, Thomas Baker, for coming back to talk to us. Now we are. We are going to kill you again, so we can get you away from us. Anytime. Anytime. Peace out.